Good morning, everybody. We're live from the Metcalf Fairgrounds, and this is the official barn quilt unveiling. We're live streaming over Facebook this morning, so it may take a minute or two for people to join us. Uh, but while they're doing that, I would just like to talk a little bit about this project and uh, introduce one of our special guests from the museum. So the Rural Ottawa Barn Quilt Trail project was launched in May 2020 as a way of drawing attention to Osgood Ward's disappearing rural landscape. The museum's hope is to promote cultural tourism, build community spirit during COVID-19, and showcase our unique community history with these barn quilts. To date, and there may be an update today, but they had 12 participants registered, including these two. So I think that makes it 13. Is that right, Jillian? Yes, that's right. That's right. Um, for both home and barn quilt trails, and we hope to continue this project long-term, generating interest from outside of Osgood Ward. Through this project, the museum is also gathering farm history to retain for future generations. So at this point, I would like to introduce Jillian Metcalf-Jordan from the Osgood Museum to say a little bit about the project and what brought them to it. Come on up, Jillian. Hi everyone, uh, as Cheryl mentioned, my name is Jillian Metcalf-Jordan. I'm the executive director with the Osgood Township Museum. And I'm really thankful for being invited here today to see the barn quilt unveiling. This has been a dream for some time of the museum, uh, reflecting on barn quilt trails that we've seen across Ontario and into the States as well too. It's actually a fairly new initiative. You think it's something that's um, been in history for quite some time, but it's actually a, a result of seeing these old timber frame barns disappearing across our landscape. So we wanted to start this project um, as a way to pay tribute to the old farms that are in our area, um, but also include some people who don't have barns or larger buildings, um, include them in a COVID friendly project by having a, a home quilt trail as well. So our hope is to have a, an interactive trail map on our website, similar to the Ontario Barn Quilt Trail website, which will encourage people, especially during this time with COVID, um, to participate in, uh, in safe and uh, friendly tourism um, with your families. And um, we're hoping that we can draw in even more people. We know that we had our submission deadline of September 30th, but we're hoping that we can continue with generating more interest in it. Um, we've actually uh, generated interest already. So as Cheryl mentioned, we have uh, 14 participants now, um, and a few, a handful of those are actually participants that are in uh, North Dundas, South Dundas, so even outside of the Osgood Ward, which is incredible to see that community spirit being shared um, everywhere in this area. So um, like Cheryl mentioned, along with our interactive map tour, we'll be highlighting the farm's history um, and the house history uh, of these areas. So. We're really excited um, and happy that the Metcalf Agricultural Society took this initiative and just ran with it and made it into an awesome community project. Um, so, and for those, just to give you a general um, overview of the museum, if you haven't been out to visit us, unfortunately we're closed right now to the public, but uh, we started in 1972 um, and we promote the agricultural and rural heritage of this area. So whenever we open up, post-COVID or what have you. Uh, we have lots of activities. We have a new uh, exhibition talking about our agricultural uh, history and uh, lots to see and do. So thanks, Cheryl. Thank you, Julian. At this point, I would just like to say that this project wouldn't have happened on the fairgrounds without two people. The first one had the idea, and that's Sarah LaFrance, who doesn't want to be any photos today, but she sent me a message and said that she thought this would be a great idea to do for the fairgrounds. And she and her husband, Steve LaFrance, who's a director, uh, they took the idea and ran with it. They were the ones responsible for making sure that we had the materials out to all the artists and getting them back and getting them up. Peter McGee also helped with putting them up last week. And uh, we thank them for their idea and making sure that it came to fruition. So let's have a big hand for Sarah and Steve LaFrance. And 
And on that note, I would like to introduce the uh, Metcalf Fair president for this year, Agnes Lee. Agnes is going to share a few words and then we're going to ask her and her family, as well as Jillian, to unveil the quilts. And then we'll have an opportunity to look at each block and uh, share a little bit about why the artist painted them the way they did. Agnes? Thank you everyone for being here. Um, and uh, on behalf of the Metcalf Ag Society, I'd like to say we're very delighted and proud to have been uh, included in this project. Uh, again, as Cheryl said, Thank you to Jillian, um, Steve, and Sarah, and Cheryl for the work and coordinating this project. And uh, we're just very proud to be part of it. Thank you, Agnes. And thank you to all the artists that participated. And typical of the fairgrounds, there's always a little bit of tractor noise to compete with. So. Uh, I think that was Mr. Dooley bringing his lawn, lawn tractor for tomorrow. Um, so I'd like to invite uh, the Lee family to come up. Andrea, Luke, Tristan, Logan, and Jillian. Maybe we'll have three on each of the quilts. So Jillian, maybe if you want to come over to this one with those guys, I'll move out of the way. All right. You gotta get the tape on that side. Okay, you ready? You have to untuck, untuck the tape. Three, two, one. One down. There we go. Thank you guys. So as you can see, what a beautiful, beautiful permanent installation on the uh, Ag Hall. So I'm going to go through each quilt and uh, they're numbered and they will be numbered in a grid. We're going to start at the top left and go across from left to right each row. So I'm starting at the top left, the yellow and blue. This quilt was uh, done by Angie Rafter. Her quilt pattern is called the Shining Star. She chose the colors blue, yellow, and white to represent the Metcalf Fair colors. And she would like to dedicate her barn quilt to the memory of her beautiful mother, Evelyn Mesenheimer. Thank you, Angie. The second one, Ingrid Shim, the flower. The blue, green, and white remind Ingrid of a flower, flowers on a walk through a field with a warm breeze on a spring day. This longtime resident of Metcalf, Ingrid is an educator at Metcalf Public School. The third one, Sarah LaFrance, Calico Corn. Sarah first began, began painting barn quilts a number of years ago, her first on her brother's barn, I believe. Is that right, Sarah? She chose this quilt block to represent autumn and the beautiful colors of the harvest season. Sarah and her husband, Steve, spearheaded this MAS community barn quilt project as a part of the Rural Ottawa Barn Quilt Trail. Number four, top right, Rawlings Family. This one is entitled Family Tradition. The Rawlings Family created their barn quilt to continue their tradition of participating and celebrating the World's Fair. Even though this year has brought many challenges, the fair spirit is still alive. Kristen, Matt, Austin, Ashley, and Paige would like to dedicate this block to the Metcalf community and the many volunteers who have given endless time throughout the years. Second row on the left, Tracy Blanchfield DeVero. The design is the Ohio Star, and her quilt is dedicated to the Osgood Family Ball Tournament families. This beloved family fundraising event was established in 1990, and they would have celebrated their 30th anniversary this year in 2020. The color choices in the quilt represent the team jersey colors of all of the families. Each family has incorporated at least one of the colors in this quilt, or shade of it, in their jury, uh, jerseys over the last several years. And the sunflower, Jessica LaPage Wilson, the showstopper. 
While the largest sunflower contest may not take a lot of room up at the Metcalf Fair, it is one of the must-see exhibits. Jessica grew up beside the fairgrounds in Rose Meadows and has volunteered with the board from a young age and has served as junior director and now a director for many years. She chose the paint colors of blue for fair skies, green for the grass, and yellow for the sun we hope to see every fair weekend. Next is Steve LaFrance's George's International Harvester. Director Steve LaFrance painted this quilt block representing the antique tractor display at the World's Fair. He dedicates it to past director George Sandbelt, who was a loyal fair volunteer for over 30 years. I love the name of this next one. Sarah LaFrance designed this one and called it Sweet, a sheaf of wheat. One of our local Metcalf harvests is beautiful golden wheat. Sarah chose this pattern to represent the sheaves of wheat proudly displayed at our fair. You'll notice that there's a few done by the LaFrance family. That's because as we came closer to the end, there were a few holes in our 32 blocks and they generously decided to do extra ones to fill the holes. The next one is also done by Sarah. It's called the Starflower Quilt. It is a symbol of brighter days ahead. Sarah chose the center star to represent the Ferris wheel, while the corner flowers represent the flowers on display in the home craft division. Number 10, Claudia Waddell, Peccary. County Fair is the first block she did, and she chose the block pattern because it seemed a fitting choice for the fairgrounds. She used the colors of black, gray, taupe, and yellow because she was choosing to be thrifty. It was what she had on hand from other exterior projects around the home. But she was also happy to use those colors because they represented the gray, cloudy, rainy, cold weather we sometimes get at the start of fair weekend for some reason, typically like yesterday. The next one is done by Judy Winster and Mary Ellen Good and it's entitled AJ's Chip Stand. The Miller sisters combined to paint this quilt block reminiscent of days when AJ's had a chip stand on the fairgrounds. One of the favorite fair foods is still chips. Al Graham, the former co-owner of AJ's Catering Service, is an extended member of the Miller family. He and his wife Judy provided meals in the dining hall for many years and are now chairs of the classic car and hot rod show. Number 12. Heather Myers Patterson. My fair quilt block is fall leaves, as the Metcalf Fair is celebrating of all things fall, reminding her of a crisp and colorful days. Heather has been commissioned to do to complete several quilt blocks on the rural Ottawa Barn Quilt Trail, and I believe one was just hung yesterday for a birthday gift on uh, Mitch Owens. So if you watch on Mitch Owens or Cooper Hill Road, you'll see some of her work or even a little bit further south on Ninth Line at Skuse Repairs. Number 13, the Dunn Family Star contains the blue and gold of the Dunn Family Crest. This one is painted by Polly Dunn. The interwoven squares are a symbol of family and community living and moving together. Number 14, bottom row, second from the left. Christine McEwen, Levicki, the Ferris Wheel. Christine grew up and still lives directly across the road from the fairgrounds with her young family. Her mom, Geraldine, was a longtime member of the family division. Christine was inspired to paint this block from the glow of the Ferris wheel at night. The pinks and blues are the neons against the dark sky. 15, Fall Sunflower by Cassidy McGee. Sunflowers have always been Cassidy's favorite flowers. Stemming back to the summer, she grew one at her grandparents' house and entered it in the Metcalf Fair. Her quilt block was inspired by that memory and the oranges and yellows of the flower and fall. She dedicates this to her grandpa McGee, an avid gardener who taught her to always be proud of the things she has grown. 16, The Windmill by Michelle Gauthier. The design? is windmill inspired to represent farmers in the area who feed cities through their efforts. The design shows the impact that the farm, the small square farm at the center, which reaches outward to the community and surrounding communities in Ottawa. It is dedicated to the Metcalf area farmers. <clears throat> Christine Rowan, the sunflower. 
Christine is a director of the MAS, and she chose the sunflower oh as a symbol of loyalty and longevity. We're moving to this side now. Her quilt is dedicated to all fair patrons, past, present, and future, for their continued support with our ever-growing community. We can continue to enjoy the World's Fair for many years to come. The second one in. That's mine. The Cooper McEwen Star is a miniature version of the barn quilt located at our farm, Heathercrest, south of Metcalf. It represents my husband's family, the McEwens, who arrived in Osgood Township in 1830, and my family, the Coopers, who arrived shortly after in 1832. The colors are taken from family tartan. I've been a director with the MAS for over 20 years and followed in the footsteps of my mom, Doris. This block is dedicated to her memory. She was a family division member for over 30 years and the chair of the home craft division. She was also known to be the one who climbed the ladder to hang the quilt displays in the family pavilion. I think Betty McGee has taken on some of that and my sister-in-law, Amanda. Up next is the, the uh, first Metcalf Girl Guides and it's entitled, Reach for the Sky. It's dedicated to the girl guides which support girls' journey girls in their journey to reach their full potential. Not only do the girls learn skills they can use for the rest of their lives, they are encouraged to reach for the sky in finding their true interests. The colors of the balloons represent each, each branch of girls within the organization. Up next is Bruce Bourgeau, Erica Morrison family, and it's entitled Golden Valley. Erica painted this quilt block to represent their area south of Metcalf on 8th line where she and her family live, their wee slice of heaven. The sun rays represent their family, one for each member that lives in the Golden Valley. 21, second row, Claudia Waddell Peccary, Corns and Beans. This was her second quilt block and she made it as a pretty easy choice. Corns and beans are the most common field crop grown in our agricultural community. And Metcalf Fair weekend usually always lands right in the middle of harvesting this fe these field crops. Isn't that the truth? So as a sixth generation farm kid whose family grew corn and beans in the Metcalf area for generations, she felt it was important to have that be a piece of the community barn quilt. The colors yellow and green represent the corn and beans. 22, Meredith Brophy, the entwined star. This block was painted with a green bracket background representing their agricultural heritage and honoring her favorite Irishman, Connor Brophy, March 17, 1985 to March 20, 2010. The entwined star points are painted in fall colors of blue and gold representing red plus our family division. 23, Joanne Latticer Cummings, the Harmony Star. This is dedicated to her father, Morris J. Latticer. My inspiration her colors came from her father, who founded MJ Latticer Company in 1965, which still operates today, 55 years later, serving dairy farmers in our community. The company is currently owned by his son, Denis, and grandson, Peter. He was born in Castleman in 1925, and her father moved back to the area in the late 1950s, starting a dairy farm in Kenmore. He was never one to pass up an opportunity, purchased a milk truck in 65, which comprised of one bulk tank and four can trucks, and eventually started painting the trucks red with black and white lettering, which is still the company's colors seen today. During his active years in the community, he was involved in the Metcalf Lions Club, the Metcalf Curling Club, and contributed the first water tanker to the Metcalf Fire Department. His fa her father also had a passion for racehorses and started Winchester Harmony Stables in the 1980s which sported the colors red, black, and white. Joanne's brother, Denis, and she were actively involved and continued to operate the farm until 2014. One of her dad's favorite colts born on the farm was named Harmony Star in 1994, before his untimely passing in 1995. Lee Stacy, our amazing village, second row on the right. This quilt block was designed to represent our amazing village. Blue for the beautiful skies, red for the amazing fall colors, black for the craziness of COVID, and silver to wrap it all up and remind us to never keep, never stop shining. 
It is dedicated to all Osgood Ward residents and volunteers to celebrate our favorite time of year, the Metcalf Fair. Make it your fair. Number 25, John Deere Green, was inspired by Lawrence, Lauren LaFrance was inspired by her visits to the antique division at the Metcalf Fair, and it is dedicated in memory of her papa, Richard LaFrance. He loved his Johnny Poppers. Number 26, the Elliott family. Life lessons from sweet corn. Most people would agree that 2020 wasn't exactly a banner year, but despite these negatives, their family chose to focus on positives. The biggest positive was the extra time they got to spend together as a family, bonus time. During this bonus time, they decided to teach their kids about where food comes from and how much work goes into producing it. So they grew sweet corn. The kids learned every aspect of farming sweet corn, picking stones and branches out of the field prior to planting, helping plant, paint signs, pick corn, taste test, and setting up a corn stand each day and taking it down at night, selling their corn at the stand, and excitedly taking payment from the lovely customers. It was the best little adventure for their family and just what they needed during uncertain times. The colors in the quilt square match the colors of the sign they made for their corn stand. They are also the only paid colors they had on hand that met the requirements for bar and quilt signs. The bar and quilt is dedicated to their hardworking three little farmers, Quinn, Blake, and Claire Elliott. Number 27, Sarah LaFrance, the honeybee quilt. One of the many displays in the home craft division includes local honey. Sarah is proud to be a local Metcalf backyard beekeeper. I know we looked up the word, it's apiest, right? Is that right? I believe so. Uh, the red square in the center of the block represents the hearth and home of the beehive. Michelle Gauthier did the next one, and I think it was the first one that was unveiled uh, on Facebook. It's called Fall Sunny Days in Metcalf. This design takes cues from the 1967 Canada Centennial Celebration logo. The color palette of fall was inspired, which makes people look forward to the Metcalf Fair. The quilt block is dedicated to Mike and Casey LaPage and all the Metcalf Fair volunteers. And moving to the last row, Tanya, Keeley, and Francis Zanbelt. This quilt is entitled Dutch Girl Barn Quilt. Painted by the Zanbelt family, it represents their family's Dutch heritage and includes orange tulips, the blue and gold of the MAS colors, and the color red for Uncle George's Case IH. And right beside it, because these two don't get too far apart, the Merkley family and the Zanbelts, Aaron Dennis and Gregory Merkley, the James Merkley Star. This is painted in the design of the Western Virginia Star and contains the Metcalf Fair colors. It is dedicated to both the James and Merkley families long-time volunteers with the MAS. 31, Steve LaFrance, Nature's Autumn Splendor. What more can you say? I would just like to say that Steve has been a long-time director with the MAS, and he has engaged his family into his volunteer work, and Steve rarely says no. So thank you, Steve, for all your work on this project and your family's work. Finally, the last one is done by Meredith Brophy, and it's the folded corner block. Folded Corner was painted in the fair colors of blue and gold, as well as green for agriculture and 4-H, to represent our Red Jacket Family Division ladies and members, because it's not restricted to ladies. It is dedicated to all our fair volunteers, past, present, and those who are now watching over us. And on that note, I would just like to say that there are a few people that are in my mind today who I know if they were standing here, they would be extremely proud of this project and the longevity that this project will have on the fairgrounds. So I would just like to put our hands together for all the artists for contributing to this amazing project. And I would like to invite them to come up. If, if your quilt's on this side, you can stand towards this side. If you have them on both, stand in the middle. If you're on this side, to this side, and we'll take some photos. So thank you very much, everyone. <coughs>